constables from the town of Halifax and the county of Plymouth greeting. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of said town, qualified to vote in elections and in town affairs, to meet at the Halifax Elementary School in said Halifax on Monday, the 11th day of May, next, at 7.30 o'clock in the afternoon, then and there to act on the following articles. You are directed to serve this warrant by posting up attested copies thereof at the town hall, Halifax post office, and three other public places in said town, seven days at least before the time of the holding said meeting. Hereof, fail not, and make due return of this warrant with your doings thereon to the town clerk at the time and place of meeting, as Alpha said, given under our hands this 14th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2015. Kim Roy, Michael Schleif, Troy Guerin, two copy of test, Thomas Hammond. Thank you, Mrs. Gator. If everyone would stand and uh, gentlemen remove your hats for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome to the first night of the annual town meeting. Uh, there's a couple of things that I would like to address to the crowd before we get started, and hopefully to avoid some confusion at some point. Um, first thing is, this will be our first test of the lottery system outside of the special town meeting we had in February. As uh, everyone should know and should remember that last year's town meeting introduced a lottery system for any article after Article 4. So the way we'll do this tonight is the first four articles will be addressed in order, <clears throat> barring a special town meeting, which will happen in 15 minutes also. Uh, and then after that, every article will be done by lottery. The uh, clerk has a, uh, a basket up here with balls in it, and she'll draw them out one at a time, give them to me to read, to read and, and select the article. Under the town bylaw, we can, uh, the moderator has the discretion to uh, address certain articles that, in my view, should be done at the same time, or at least one has to be done before the other. Uh, after reviewing this article, Articles number 54 and 55 are related, in my view, that way. And article 59 and 60 are also related. So for anyone who wants to take a note, if either article 55 or 54 comes up, we'll do 54 first, regardless of which article comes up. And when article 60 or 59 comes up, we will do article 59 first and then article 60. Um, to remind you, uh, remind folks that uh, in order to be recognized, the moderator has to actually recognize the speaker. Uh, it would help me out a great deal if when you want to be recognized, if you would stand, raise your hand, and call out Mr. Moderator. I try to keep track of everyone who is um, uh, looking to speak, and I try to have it rotating so we don't have the same people talking all, this, all the time at the same time. Um, but if you do that, that will give me a better opportunity to know that you're interested in having a, uh, a say. When you do come up to the mic, please introduce yourself. Uh, it's not just a courtesy to all of us, but the clerk keeps a record of the speakers, so we need to know your name and your address, or at least the street. Uh, the cable TV people have asked me to warn the uh, town meeting that there is a, a wire that runs right down the middle of the aisle here. It's taped down. Please be careful as you cross. Um, Halifax and Lights is running a bake and coffee sale in the next room, so at a break or at any time during the night, they would appreciate your support if you would go in and buy something from them or make a donation. Either way, it would be good. Uh, and then finally, tonight we have uh, retirements from two uh, uh, town officials. And I'd like just to mention those and ask the town to uh, recognize them. Uh, first is select chairman, uh, selectman chairman Michael Schleich, uh, who is now uh, decided not to run again and will be retiring uh, from the Board of Selectmen uh, after six years. Um, I'd ask the crowd to give him a hand. He's done a give you any speeches. Is that a clock because I'm leaving or a clock because... <laughs> we'll leave that for you to decide. Man. Good point. Uh, secondly, uh, we have in attendance tonight Mr. Tuffy. Uh, John Tuffy is the superintendent of the Silver Lake Regional School District and Union 31, I think it is. Uh, has been so for eight years. Uh, prior to that, he was a business manager for the uh, Silver Lake District. 
Uh, John's been a, a, a great superintendent, I think. Uh, he's done a wonderful job for the district. Uh, in his tenure, we have gone through buildings and, and all sorts of things. And I think um, I would ask the town to, and he's also, uh, in my experience, the only superintendent that has, I don't think, ever missed one of our town meetings. So uh, that's something to be credited for. He pays close attention. Would you give him a big hand for it? Finally, we have uh, the, the treasurer collector, Kathy Chabon, who I think is here. I don't know if see her. But, um, she's also retiring. Oh, there she is in the back. She'll also be retiring this year. So we have one more. Uh, if you would just give Kathy a big hand. <laughs> Thank you for your uh, indulgence in all of that. And now, moving right into tonight's business. Article 1 is um, <clears throat> Article 1, uh, we need a motion and a second, please. We have a motion, we have a second. Motion and a second to hear and act on the reports of the town officers and committees. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Do we have any other reports? Mrs. Boyd. I'm going to stand up because I'm so short so everybody can see me. The Board of Selectmen would like to thank those who have come tonight to participate in town meeting. As all of you know, this is your town, your budget, and your bylaws. How lucky we are as citizens that we have the ability to participate in how our town is run and how our hard-earned tax dollars are spent. We recognize that you are busy in your lives but applaud you for taking advantage of this very important right. The Board of Selectmen would also like to begin by expressing its appreciation for all of those residents who have volunteered in some capacity for the town of Halifax. These individuals include not only those who have served on a board or committee, but have volunteered in other ways. Whether you helped at the library, assisted at the senior center, volunteered at our elementary school, coached one of our children, or participated in any one of our community events, we thank you. While the economic recession continues to plague our country, state, and town, Halifax has continued to provide vital services to our residents. We recognize that you, the taxpayer, are also trying to balance your own budgets. This economy has made it difficult for you as well. For two fiscal years, the town did not collect up to the levy limit of 2.5%. This amount was represented approximately $250,000 that was left untaxed. Although tax bills were still increasing, not going to the levy limit did provide some relief to taxpayers. At the beginning of the budget season, we were hopeful that we could do the same. As budgets were being submitted, we received news that we were facing a devastating increase in mandated special education costs. I know that devastating seems to be a very strong word, but having a $450,000 increase was devastating. After hearing this news, we knew that in order to protect key services that our town provides, it was necessary to recommend not only collecting to the full levy for the proposed fiscal year, but also tax a majority of the previously unspent levy. The budget before you tonight will increase the average tax bill approximately 4.5%. The Finance Committee has spent countless hours analyzing budgets and trying their best to minimize the tax increase. There were many, many discussions with department heads, boards, and committees about maintaining key services. These were not easy decisions at all. It is difficult to balance the needs of our town with the knowledge that the taxpayers are trying to balance their own needs. We want to thank the Finance Committee again for the de dedication to the town. When I say they spend countless hours going over this material, they really do. And uh, we would like again to thank you for being here and participating in a very important process. Please remember that our volunteers love our town and our, and our taxpayers themselves love this town. They spend countless hours again from staying away from their own families to help support our town. Please remember to be respectful during town meeting. We understand that you feel as passionate about Halifax as we all do. So let us work together to keep Halifax the wonderful town that we love. Thank you, Mrs. Roy. Any other um, reports? Seeing none, we'll move on to Article 2. Uh, 
Um, before we take the motion on Article 2, I'll point out that Article 2 is actually 10 separate sections or 10 sections. I will uh, divide this article into 10 separate votes. So we'll, we'll address uh, the, first, the first one on a motion and the second and debate that, and then we'll go right down the list on all 10. Uh, we are scheduled to start a special town meeting at 8 o'clock. However, we will not interrupt an article to take up the special town meeting. So more than likely, the special town meeting will, will be started a little bit later. Um, article 2, Wage and Personnel's article. <laughs> Ring Rogers, Chairman of Wage and Personnel Board. I would like to move the article as printed at the 1.5% across the board wage increase for all non union town employees. Okay, we have a second? So this is, uh, again, just so we can follow along on Article 2, Amendment Number 1, which appears at the bottom of uh, eight, page 8 of the Finance Committee Handbook, has been moved as read for a 1.5% wage increase uh, for non-union personnel. Finance Committee's recommendation. The Finance Committee does not recommend a 1.5% increase, so I would make a motion to amend recommend a 1% increase. We have a second. Not second. hearing a second. 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 We have a second. So the motion and a second to amend the motion that's on the floor. We have to take up that amendment first. <clears throat> so we will, um, we will now open to debate uh, the discussion on whether or not to amend the wage and personnel's article to, to reflect a 1% increase. If that motion passes, then we will vote on 1%. If not, we go back to the 1.5%. Finance Committee, it's your amendment. Do you want to make any comments? So the Finance Committee, uh, again tonight, looked at the numbers. Um, there were a number of discussions over whether or not we would support one and a half or the one. After looking at all the numbers again, um, the vote was three to three to recommend a one and a half, so that fails. So the committee voted. It was a four, right? It was a four to two vote to recommend the one percent increase. Okay. So any debate, any questions on the uh, motion to amend the motion that's on the floor? and whether or not it should be amended to reflect the 1%. Seeing no uh, indication thereof, I'll take a voice vote on whether or not to amend the Wage and Personnel's uh, motion. All those in favor of amendment, say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Uh, I think, uh, I, I can't say for sure one way or another. Uh, Mr. Wright, are you available? Thank you. either seated uh, or in the gallery over here if you're not a town meeting member. You know, there's some folks out in the corridor there, Chief. If those guys are, if, if they can either sit down and step outside, whoever's in there, that's not going to be voting. And a uh, couple over here, a few folks all have a seat so we can get an accurate count. Okay, remember, the vote that you're about to take uh, is on whether or not to amend the wage and personnel's recommended 1.5%, then to vote on whether or not a 1% raise will happen. So it's, it'll be two votes if it passes. Okay, so all those in favor of the amendment to 1% increase, please stand and remain standing.
Please be seated. All those, all those opposed to amendment, please stand and remain standing. Be seated. And of those present and voting, 84 yes, 35 no, the amendment passes. We now move on to the motion as amended, which is to grant all non union wage and personnel employees an across the board increase of 1%. That motion's already been on the floor. That motion's already on the floor. Is there any debate? Yes, ma'am. In the front here. That may not be on. Make sure it's on. <laughs> not only that, it doesn't work. Who knows how to fix that? Mr. Elliott, can I have to fix this? I just have a question. I want to know if this 1% is on top of the step increases. Okay, I'll give an answer for you. Um, where's Mrs. Rogers? Mrs. Rogers, oh, you're going to have to give her the microphone until we get that fixed. Yes, it is, but not everybody has step increases. Um, a lot of the town employees reach a maximum level, and they can't go any higher except on whatever we vote at town meeting once a year. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. So then we can we amend it to just the people that does not include step raises? the amount of people that it would apply to? Well, um, I think that's discrimination. Well, we can change the bylaw any way we want to. Uh, you could amend. I think, uh, I think what you're asking us to do is to amend the top step by 1% and not any other step effect of what you would end up doing so that anybody else is only the top step would get the one percent increase. Exactly. Okay. So if you're eligible for a step grade, then no increase. If you're not eligible, then yes, an increase. So that is that your motion? That yes. you want to amend you want to amend uh, um, amendment one for article two so that the one percent increase would apply <coughs> excuse me only to the top step. Exactly. Okay, we have a second. A second. I have a motion and a second to amend the, um, uh, with the current amendment number one to the wage and personnel by restricting the 1% increase only to the top step. Uh, it's your motion. Go ahead and make your argument on the question to amend the amendment. Your motion. Okay, so we're giving like double raises if you're already getting a step then I don't think you should be getting a 1% increase on top of your step. 
but I do believe if you reach the top step, then you are entitled to a 1% increase. All right, uh, have a seat, please. And then uh, I'm going to have to ask for the Finance Committee's recommendation on whether or not to amend the amendment by focusing this 1% uh, increase only on the top step. Just one second. Motion's done. Mr. Moderator, nobody has a question. Is it a question or a point of order? It's a question. Right, hold on a minute. Let me, well, let me, get, let me get them there. It's kind of a point of order, too. It is, right, the fine. intent was, I believe, just to have people currently at the step six get the 1%. But if you increase the six, the top step by 1%, then anyone who's moving in the next fiscal year from step five to step six would also get that 1% where other people moving from steps wouldn't get it. So I think that would be grossly unfair. Okay, but, but I think it's getting point, too complicated. Hold, hold, hold that point. Uh, I, it's really not a point of order. So let me get the Finance Committee's recommendation that was taken the debate. Motion now. Okay. All different. No. Motion is carried. Thank you. Not to recommend voting. Mr. Moderator, yes. the Finance Committee does not recommend. Okay, Finance Committee does not recommend. Uh, we, we heard from you already. Uh, Mr. Conroy in the back has had his hand up. Come on up front. Again, we're talking about amending the um, amendment just for the top okay. step. How you doing? Jason Conroy, 21 Jordan Road. Um, I'm still new to town meeting, so I don't know if there's a point of order, but I'd like to bring up that I don't think this needs to be amended in any way because in our town bylaws, there is a process for people who are at their top tier to get a raise. And I'll read from that section. It's uh, chapter 35-17, subsection C. Any employee who has been at the maximum step of his or her schedule for five years may, upon recommendation of the department head, be considered for a merit increase to be acted upon at annual town meeting. Said merit increases to be no more than 5% of the employee's base salary. Performance evaluation forms must be completed annually. The employee must have received an overall rating of CE consistently exceeds, meaning that they did a great job for five years, um, for five consecutive years while on their top step. My point being is this, is that I understand there are certain individuals in town that have reached the top step. There is a section in our town bylaws already written where they can get a raise. We've already written them in the bylaws. We don't need to give the whole town a 1% raise or a one and a half just to appease the people that are at their top tier already. Okay, thank you. Uh, over here, um, this is small. <clears throat> Hi, Summer Schmeling, Indian Path Road. Um, just for clarification, not everybody gets a step increase every year, correct? Uh, why don't I ask the wage and personnel to answer that? Just move to the side. So, so if they're not at top step, then they get a step increase every year? You have to look in your program. It's right there. Yeah. From here, right to... Two years, step one, two steps. But I'm right. I understand that. But I'm saying every year they automatically increase the step. Let me. Uh, let we me. This is uh, Mr. Rogers. You guys aren't supposed to talk to each other. Oh right. <laughs> Why don't you sit down for a second? And I think Mrs. Roy, who used to be on the wage of person, yes. might be able to answer. You. So um, an employee will receive a, a step as long as they have a performance evaluation that that confirms that they at least meet the standards of their job for that particular year. So a step isn't automatic. A performance evaluation has to be completed in order to receive the step. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Rogers. It used to be that they automatically moved once a year to the next step. We've taken steps to change that, as Kim just said. That they have to go through an evaluation process and meet certain standards. And then if 
the town votes the increase, then it goes, if they, if their supervisors approve it, it goes on. As far as the merit increase is concerned, that has to go through a department head, and then it has to be brought to the town floor. And we haven't been doing 5%, any 1% to 5% merit increases in the last couple of years. The way to personnel board is looking to do away with that. As far as a 1.5% increase is concerned, we have researched other towns that are comparable to ours, and the majority of them order. have given the 1.5%. Who's saying that? I can't see you. you got to stand up. OK, that's it. What's your point of order? We already have amended the motion to 1%. The 1.5% is not to be argued. Okay. Uh, you, you can continue with your uh, statement as long as you stick to the 1% issue. Really I'm getting some seconds. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, yes, this is <coughs> So are we being told that they don't automatically go from step one to step two? I don't know, but if you have a seat, I'll find out for you. Mrs. Rogers? That used to be the case, but we've tried to do away with that, that they have to do, no, they have to go through the evaluation. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah. One at a time, please. So is there anybody that works for the town that has failed an evaluation that has not gone from step one to step two or three to four in previous years? Or do they all pass the evaluation? We'll try to find out. Mrs. Roy, can you answer that? Yes, there are times when people do not receive their step. So should the taxpayers pay for that because the people aren't doing their job or should they Maybe let's not get too far. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. It's not the taxpayer's fault that the person's not getting their evaluation if you're going through a step and they don't. Wait, 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 too much debate going on. Your question was, does it go automatic? We have the answer to that. Uh, this, I'm going to say that if we're going to debate whether or not it should be automatic or whether the person should be fired instead, that's outside of the scope of what we're talking that about. That wasn't my point. My point was if they don't get a step raise because they did not pass the evaluation, why should the taxpayers give them a 1.5 or 1 percent increase? All right, that's good. Thank you. Okay, any other comments on the amendment that is presently on the floor, which is to uh, restrict a 1% increase only to those at the top step. Any other debate on that topic? Seeing none. All those in favor of amending this uh, amendment so that the 1% applies only to the top step, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. That fails. We now move back to the amended article, which is to grant all non-union wage and personnel employees and across the board wage increase of 1%. Mr. Conway. How you doing, Jason Conroy, 21 John Road. Um, I'd like to make a couple of, i actually like to make three points and get some questions answered. Um, this states that all non-union wage and personnel employees across the board receive a one and a half percent increase. Is it? I'm, I'm sorry, amended to one percent, get an increase of one percent. Do all of the unions in town, excluding the teachers union, also retroactively get this one percent increase because of their collective bargaining um, agreements that in their agreements, so pretty much every town employee excluding the school, the people in the school because it's a regional school district, every other employee that is a union employee gets this raise if we voted in because of their collective bargain agreement. That's my question. Well, let me, let me take these one at a time so I don't lose them. So I think the town accountant has an answer for that question, if you do. <laughs> well, or the board select I can. I, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Andrews, the chairman of the finance committee. Okay, to answer the question, that this article deals with the non-union employees. There are 
other articles later that the Finance Committee would be recommending to get the same increase that the wage and personnel employees get. So if the wage and, pers wage and personnel employees get a 1% raise, then on the other articles that deal with, so articles 9 through 13 would also expect to see the same increase percentage-wise that the no, wage and personnel employees well, get. Before, before we get too confused, but they vote on this article is dealing only with the wage and personnel bylaw. So whatever you vote on, on the current amendment number one will only affect the wage and personnel bylaw, which does not include any collective bargaining people. At a later time, we will address collective bargaining issues under this town meeting, or we may not. It's up to the town and up to the people making their recommendations, but all of that is be a separate debate from just the wage and personnel. So. It is the Board of Selectmen's recommendation, you'll see later on, that whatever the other unions that we negotiate contracts with receive the same increase that non-union employees do. But I, for, for clarification, just so for open disclosure of all contracting that are, have been negotiated, the line items for the schools have contracts that have already been approved and binding with school committee members for at least one and a half percent for the fiscal year going forward. Okay, so second question. Uh, the second question I have would be this is that, so my point would be is if we vote a 1% increase, then every other town employee gets a 1% increase. With no, this is no. not. Uh, with the exception of the teachers. So everybody gets it. No, no, no. 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 But I miss it. <laughs> Wait till you call on down there. <laughs> so the answer to your question is. This is a wage and personnel bylaw only. Only deals with wage and personnel employees. Assumingly, possibly, maybe, your government officials may recommend that collective bargaining uh, people get a raise, and they may recommend the same raise, they may recommend a different one. We don't know until we get there. But what you're gonna vote on right now deals only with wage and personnel, which is non-collective uh, bargaining people. Okay, uh, then my next point goes back to when I stood up before and said, because this, the argument that has been made for this is that there's people in town that aren't eligible for a raise because they've reached their top tier in pay. Um, everybody else has gotten a raise, except for the people at the top tier, and they have no recourse for that. Again, I cite um, chapter 35, section 17, if I remember, subsection C, that there is a way for a town employee who has reached their top tier to petition for a merit-based raise. Therefore, I don't think we should give any raises out, because we already gave them out when you got here. Step tier. All right. Thank and you. That's it. Any other debate on the amended figure on Article 1, or Article 2, rather, First Amendment? Seeing no other debate, so I'm going to just make sure everyone understands. The vote that you're about to take will deal with whether or not a 1% across the board increase is given to only the wage and personnel employees. That's everyone exempting the union people, which would be police, fire, schools, all of that. All those in favor of the 1%, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Passes by majority. Moving on to Amendment 2, Wage and Personnel, which would be on page 8 of the Finance Committee Handbook, I think. To, uh, just as it's written in the warrant, you can make that motion. <coughs> yes, I do, as, uh, as written, as printed. Okay, so we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve Amendment 2 uh, under the Wage and Personnel uh, Article uh, 2, and that's the one that starts on page 8, says 2, under section 35.14, and there are changes to the language. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Mrs. Rogers, do you want to speak to your uh, motion? Uh, 
that, that we will um, review the work of all positions covered by the plan, and they'll only be performed at the request of the department head or the employee. Uh, I've missed a few meetings this year, and I think I'm on top of everything. But the way it's written on the top, we want to change it to the way it's written with the following, which is what I just read. We have finance committee's recommendation on Amendment 2 to Article 2. The Finance Committee recommends. The finance Committee recommends. Any debate on the motion regarding Artic uh, Amendment, the Second Amendment on Article 2 to the Wage and Personal Bylaw? Yes, sir. You have to talk to the microphone. Paul Delady, Cranberry Drive. Um, based on the previous discussion we had on raises, the people in order to get their step raises need to be reviewed. If we are only reviewing from time to time and request to the head, are people only getting their step reviews or step raises at the time? Are they, since we have to have review to have a step increase, are people only having step increases at the request of their department head? I'll try to get an answer for you. Do you want Charlie to do it? Uh, Charlie C. Lake, the uh, town administrator. This is a separate issue from doing evaluations. You just all talked about evaluations a few minutes ago. What this is, is that under the current bylaw, the Wage and Personnel Board reviews all the job descriptions, not the people, but the job descriptions for all the positions under the Wage and Personnel Board. They will look at the job description, they'll look at the responsibilities, experience needed, and such. They'll compare it against the, uh, job descriptions and wage levels in other communities that are comparable to Halifax in terms of size and demographics, size of budget, and cost of living, things like that. What the Wage and Personnel Board has asked is that rather than do it every three years for each position, that it do that evaluation of the position, not the person, on an as-needed basis in the sense of the employee holding that position can come back to the Wage and Personnel Board, request that the position be reevaluated, or the department head can do the same thing. So it won't be done for every position every three years, it will be done when requested. But again, this is an evaluation of the position, not the person. Okay, thank you. Any other debate on uh, the Second Amendment to our Seeing no such debate, all those in favor of the amendment as printed in the warrant, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Moving on to Article 3, um, Mrs. Rogers. I'd like to move this article as printed on the page there in regards to a probationary period for new employees. Okay, wait a minute. Did you, you just moved it as printed, right? As printed. Let me get a second. I have a motion and a second to move the Third Amendment again on page 8 as printed in the warrant. Mrs. Rogers, it's your motion. Go ahead and, and make your statement. The, the board, along with um, Charlie and some members of the Board of Selectmen, we've been discussing this and we feel the need is there that when you hire somebody and you start to train them, you give them a reasonable length of time to teach them the job if it's over and above what they already knew. And then there comes a time when you know whether or not they can do the job. Instead of just hanging on to someone who is not productive and can't do the job, now we have a probationary period that every new employee will be told up front and they will be evaluated by the department head as they go along. And then no more than a six month period, if the town feels that person is not qualified or capable of doing that job, within that six months, they can remove that person from the position. Okay, thank you. Wage and personnel, uh, I'm sorry, finance committee's recommendation. The finance committee recommends. Finance committee recommends, uh, yes sir. Uh, Jeff Bolger, Halifax. I just kind of have a question here because this concept it generally deals with collective bargaining employees who have rights. They, if they're terminated, they have just cause rights to go to appeal to arbitration and so forth. It's been my understanding, and maybe I'm wrong, that town non-union employees are employees at will and basically could be terminated at 
any point that the department or the, the, that the town wanted. And I'm just wondering from a legal standpoint now that you're saying, okay, you have a probationary period for six months. If they get past that six months, are we now saying that they have automatic tenure for life and they can't be terminated? Or I mean, what, what, what's the standard at that point in time? I'll try to get an answer for you. Mr. Seelig is going to take a shot at it. I'll cover two areas where people continue to be evaluated. One is obviously as part of the wage and personnel process, all employees on the wage and personnel are evaluated at least once a year. So and that doesn't change at all with this probationary period. Second is that no one gets tenure, including me, um, no matter how many years you've been working for the town as a wage and personnel employee. You still need to meet the standards of your department. You still need to meet the needs of your superiors. That means that there is, you can suffer discipline, whether it's a verbal warning, written warning, suspension, termination, whatever it is. And we've talked already, for instance, about the, uh, if you're not your evaluation doesn't meet muster, that you're not going to get that step increase. None of that changes. The intent, I think, in terms of talking to wage and personnel about this is to really impress upon the department heads that they need to continue to evaluate their employees, especially during that first six-month period, to say to them, and this is more to the department heads, look, you need to review whether your employee is doing the job he or she should be doing, whether that person needs more help, whether that person needs more training, or some one-on-one -on -one assistance, however it's done to ensure that, that employee is doing his or her work to the standards of that department. There's nothing right now in the bylaw about that. And I understand for many of you, you would say, well, that's self-evident. I mean, of course that's what department heads should be doing. But we don't have a personnel department here. We don't have a human resources department. And sometimes one of the ways of getting the word out to the department of heads about how they need to run their departments. And remember, most of our department heads are field people in the sense of they're doing actual work in the department. And that means, and I understand that means office work, it also means outside work, but they're not just sitting at a desk managing the department. They're doing the actual work of the department. They don't specialize in human resources. We try and do a little bit of training with them every year, but this is a way of impressing upon them what they need to be doing as a department head in working with their employees and trying to give the best chance that, that employee will be success or if by the end of six months, there's clear indication that employees are going to meet the standards that, hey, this is a perfect time to say to that employee, sorry, we need to let you go because you're not meeting the standards of the department. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion on um, Amendment 3 to the Wage and Personnel Bylaw? Seeing there evidence, there's, uh, no evidence thereof, rather. All those in favor of the amended, uh, of amendment as printed in the warrant say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously, moving on to Article uh, 4, I'm sorry, uh, Amendment 4 under Article 2. I move that the town vote to approve Amendment 4 as printed in the warrant. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to uh, approve the, four, uh, yeah, the fourth uh, amendment uh, as listed in Article 2 in the warrant. Mrs. Rogers, it's your article. Do you want to speak to it? This is actually just a uh, cleaning up of the language. Instead of saying um, library director assistant, we're changing it to assistant library director. And that has something to do with the state forms that are filled in, and it's the category that's used throughout the uh, state of Massachusetts. Okay, thank you. Finance committee's recommendation, please. The finance committee recommends. Finance committee recommends. Any discussion on the Fourth Amendment uh, under Article Two? Seeing no evidence thereof, all those in favor of uh, the Fourth Amendment under Article Two as printed in the warrant say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, moving to Article Five. Uh, I'm sorry, Amendment Five. Mrs. Rogers. 
time, move that the town vote to amend Article 5, Section 3522.1E, Grade 8, by adding the following. Under Categories 4, Senior Treatment Plant Operator with a stipend of $1.50 per hour. Okay, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. So this is a little bit different than is printed in the warrant. I'm going to read it again so that uh, everyone is clear. That, um, uh, the vote is to amend Article 5, Section 35-22.1E, Grade 8, by adding the following, and then uh, four in parentheses, Senior Treatment Plant Operator with a stipend of $1.50 per hour. Mrs. Rogers, it's your article. Do you want to speak to it? This article actually came from the uh, Water Department, and the uh, premises under the whole situation is that if the department head is on vacation or, heaven forbid, sick, there should be somebody to be in charge during his absence. And what they want to do is they're not creating a new position. They have a person within the department that would take over that responsibility in his absence and would get a stipend of $1.50 more an hour. And I think if you need more clarification that the water superintendent can speak to that. Okay. Um, Finance committee's recommendation? Finance committee recommends. Finance committee recommends. Any discussion on uh, the Fifth Amendment as contained in Article 2 of the Wage and Personnel Bylaw as stated by uh, Mrs. Rogers, which is the uh, senior treatment plan operator stipend of $1.50 per hour. Seeing no evidence. Yep, yes, sir, Mr. Baldwin. Jeff Bolger, um, Brandeis Circle. It's fairly common practice throughout state government and town government that if you have an assistant that if you're on vacation or short-term disability, you're out sick or something, that person moves up and fills your, fills your position. And normally, there is not extra pay attached to that. Um, I mean, I think we've got town treasurer, town clerk. If they're on vacation, their second in command fills, fills in for them, and there's no extra pay. And unless this is a licensed position that the person stepping up has to have some secondary license, I don't think it's needed, and I think it's setting a bad precedent. Why should the water department second in command get more money when he fills in on a temporary absence and not other people in other departments? Yeah, I mean, pumping water I don't think is necessarily rocket science. Thank you. Mr. Swanson. Let's, uh, let's try to hold. Let's try to hold the, uh, the commentary to. to uh, yeah, Keith Swanson, the local water superintendent. Uh, this is a very important position, and we need to have it. We do not have a form on the department, and it's time that we had one. Okay, thank you. Or the senior treatment plan operator. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, discussion, Mr. Conroy? <coughs> Uh, Jason Conroy, 21 Jordan Road. Just for clarification, the dollar and a half stipend per day, is that only when they are taking over the responsibilities, or is that a dollar fifty additional raise pretty much for the 40 hours plus that they work? Okay, it's per hour, dollar fifty per hour, not dollar fifty per day. I'm sorry, dollar fifty per hour. Yeah. Is that going to be for over and above? what they're making now for their current position, or is it just when they step in to take over for the superintendent? I'll find out for you. Uh, Mr. Swanson, you can try that. That's going to be based on a 40-hour week. Okay, so every hour they work, they end up to have an additional $1.50 on their rate. Correct. Okay. And yes, Mr. Conroy? And is that for 52 weeks a year, or is that just the week that you're on vacation? Okay, we'll find out for you. Mr. Swanson? You know, I'm making you hop up and down, but if I let everybody stand That's up. That's 52 weeks a year. All right. Mr. Walter? Then that, 
then that is completely contrary to what the article was proposed to us. We were specifically told that it was, this was a supplemental pay for filling in when the water superintendent wasn't there. And now we're finding out that it's a 40 hour new position. I think Mrs. Rogers specifically said this is not a new position. Okay, I think it's not a new position. Just to be clear, as I understand it, we're talking about whatever that person's wage rate is, will go up by $1.50 an hour after town meeting vote. Uh, any further discussion on amendment number five, or amendment number five to the wage and personnel bylaw? Mr. Moderator. I'm oh, sorry, yes. So the finance committee vote that was taken was based on what Mrs. Rogers had explained. And that it was not, it was not, I'm sorry, the, Mr. Moderator, based on a previous speaker that's the wage and personnel chair, it was explained to the finance committee that this would only happen when the superintendent was not at his job, not, an, not a second in command. Okay, well, the article doesn't specify uh, times. All it says, just so we're clear, all the article says is senior treatment plant operator will will have a stipend of $1.50 per hour. It doesn't limit it in any which way. That's what we're voting on. Mr. Schleit. Yeah, I had a question that he some, he had asked of additional certification. I think was I'm that? asking that is there additional certification required for this individual to be able to maintain? Let me find out. Mr. Swanson? Uh, no, there's not. We both uh, have distribution and treatment licenses. Okay. Any? Yes, sir. <laughs> My name is Richard Clark. I'm the former water superintendent for the past 20 years until Mr. Swanson took over. Oh, okay. The whole, one of the whole reasons to get in this position was because the superintendent is probably the only department head in the town that has four different places that he has to watch. He's got the office, the garage, the treatment plant, and the uh, filtration plant. He can't be, I couldn't be anywhere all four at one time. I don't think he can either. The other thing is too is when he is out, and I don't care if he's just gone from the town for a couple of hours, if something happens, you need to have somebody here that can step up and take care of the problem. I understand that it, you know, we're not rocket scientists, but you know, I will want everybody to be comfortable. How many people here had a drink of water today? You don't want a dumbbell stepping up. You want somebody who knows what they're doing and is here to take charge when he's not around. That's the whole purpose of this. Okay, thank you. Any other Just discussion on Mr. Andrews? Yes. So, because of the new information, the Finance Committee is now not recommending. The Finance Committee has changed their recommendation. Uh, yes, sir. Hi, Robert Slager, Twin Lakes Drive. Um, in lieu of uh, the new information, a lot of the confusion here, I'd like to make an amendment for further study on this article. Well, I can propose it. Propose it. Uh, uh, what was your amendment? I didn't hear it then. Uh, further study. I'm sorry? Further study. Further study. Um, I'm going to rule that out of order because I don't think we have any provision in our bylaw uh, to do that. Um, and I would suggest that if this was voted down, that it would go back to further study, I suppose. But, so I'm going, to, I'm going to rule that motion out of order. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor of our Amendment 5, as stated by the Wage of Personnel, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me, let me. Come on up front, please. Hi, I'm Don Chilly, on Parsons Street. Can I make an amendment to that, that we make him only while he's on vacation and if he's sick or whatever, so we do have someone in place, please? Uh, that way the guy gets paid, then we have someone in place. Give me a minute to think about how to do this. Uh, so your amendment is... Uh, that the... Um, it's a compromise. No, I understand that. I'm trying to get the words right. So, okay. right. so your amendment is your motion. You're making a motion to amend that uh, amendment number four, senior treatment plant operator with a stipend of $1.50 per hour, uh, effective 
uh, only when he is substituting for the water superintendent? Is yes. That what you're trying to say? Okay, yes. hold on a second. Okay. I'm sorry, I missed your name again. Don Shadley. Shadley? Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Shadley has made the motion that we amend this <coughs> on the floor right now under the amendment number five to article two to read senior treatment plant operator with a stipend of $1.50 per hour effective only when the, um, uh, uh, only when, uh, is it standing in for? Only when he is standing in for the water superintendent. Okay, so that's the motion for Mr. Shanley. Hold on a second. Now we have a second. I need a second for that. Second. I have a motion and a second. All right, Mr. Shanley, it's your motion. If you want to speak to it, you can. You don't have to. It's up to you. Well, thank you. Okay. <laughs> the finance committee. Hold on a second. The finance committee's recommendation. Does not recommend the amendment. Mr. Swanson, you wanted to comment? John, can we, can we go backwards here a little bit? I'd just like to make a note. We are one of the only water departments on the South Shore that does not have an on-call paid system, including nights and weekends. Okay. Okay, so the we now have moved to whether or not to amend the article that's already on the floor. So the next vote will be solely whether or not to amend. So a after hearing all the debate, I, I think the town would be better off if the water department does need a second person in control when the superintendent isn't there, then that's what should be asked for at the water by the wage and personnel should look at that. That's what you're asking for. You're not really asking for somebody to step up when you're not there. It's to be second in, second in command and have those duties as well. It's really a new position that you're asking for. Okay, so the question though is whether or not we're going to amend what's on the floor, which is that the senior treatment plant operator with a state stipend of $1.50 per hour, <coughs> only where the, the uh, water, direct, water superintendent is out of town, sick, or vacation. Only on the question to amend, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, opposed? No. no. Fails. Okay, so now, now we move to the amended article. Um, okay, so the article on the floor. The amendment will be senior treatment plant operator with a stipend of $1.50 per hour. All those in favor of that amendment say aye. 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 Opposed? No. All right, the amendment fails. Article, so section Amendment 5 under Article 2 fails by majority. Moving on to our Amendment 6, Mrs. Rogers. Move that the town vote to approve Amendment 6 as, 6 as printed in the line. Okay, we have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve Article 6, or Amendment 6 to the Wage and Personnel Board as published in the art, uh, in the warrant under the amendment, um, under number six. Um, Mrs. Rogers, do you want to speak to uh, the change? In discussion on the board, we have a category in our Wage and Personnel Bylaw that are unclassified positions. Um, seasonal, um, summer lifeguards, uh, recreation, things like that. And after a lot of discussion, we decided that those positions should not just automatically go up and be, some of them were like $16 an hour to start. So we decided that the seasonal labor 
should be a grade two step one equivalent, which if voted tonight would be thirteen eighty an hour. Okay, thank you. Finance okay. committee, I'm sorry, did I cut you off? Finance committee's recommendation. The finance committee recommends. The finance committee recommends amendment six as printed in the article. Any debate on this amendment? Seeing no evidence thereof, all those in favor of amendment six as printed in the article uh, number two say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Passes by majority. Moving on to. Um, article 7, I mean, I'm sorry, Amendment 7 in Article 2, Mrs. Uh, Rogers. I move that the town vote to approve Amendment 7 as printed in the warrant. We have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve Amendment 7 as printed in uh, the warrant, Article 2. Uh, finance committee's recommendation. The Finance Committee recommends. The finance Committee recommends. Any discussion on Amendment 7 as printed in Article 2, Mr. Bold? Jeff Bolger, Brandeis Circle. Is this position uh, one that's currently filled? I'll find out for you if you'd have a seat. Uh, and, 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 and I guess oh, is you also, if so, what's what's the pay grade and is this new position going to result in an upgrade for that position? We'll try and find out. Uh, Mr. Seeley? No, we do not have anybody in either of those positions right now. We haven't had someone in the uh, current position for at least a decade, as far as I know. Um, what we're trying to do is establish a position on a part-time basis at that wage rate to fulfill those functions that need to be done. Um, right now, you're, the choices for the town are in terms of uh, computer maintenance are either A, bring in someone at a very much higher um, <laughs> hourly rate than anybody else gets in this town, or two, the guy at the microphone has to do it. And there's probably other things that you'd rather have me doing than um, play around with computers all day, even though that's probably what I do anyway. <laughs> Any further discussion on Amendment 7 to the Wage and Personnel Bylaw as printed in Article 2? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Kim Shoshim on Haunted Street. I would just like to know, is uh, Charlie saying that he set up the network at the town hall? Say that again. It, did he set up the network at the town hall? The town administrator? Yes. We'll find out. Please have a seat. The network at the town hall was not done by me. It was done, I was here, but I wasn't involved in setting up the network. I believe we had a couple of outside people and the current town account at that time uh, worked with them on setting up the computer network. It was probably about 12 or 14 years ago. Um, so if things go wrong, I either have to try and fix it or I get somebody else to come in and fix it, but it wasn't set up by me. Thank you. Any further discussion on Amendment 7 to the Wage and Personnel Bylaw as printed in Article 2? <coughs> Mr. Conroy? Yeah. Remember, folks, call out Mr. Moderator because I may not, may not see your hand raised. Unless you really don't want me to call out. You're just waving your hand. So Hi, Jason Conroy. Um, have we interviewed for this position already? And if we have, what's the change from the computer network manager? What pay grade is that at right now? Uh, versus what the new pay rate would be at grade seven, step one. What is the difference on those? Please have a seat, Mr. Seeley. We've done no interviewing, but mostly because we haven't, since this hasn't been approved by town meeting yet, I haven't advertised when, if town meeting approves it and approves the necessary money in the DP budget, then we'll do the advertising and do the interviews. Um, according to the Wage and Personnel Board right now, the current wage for the network, well, no, that's, is that the network <coughs> specialist? Because we haven't had, again, we haven't had, uh, well, if you look under grade U and classified five other, I think, let's see if we have it still there. I mean, I don't think we've paid, since we haven't paid anybody for uh, more than a decade. No, I understand it's there. Um, but What page are you on? Well, that's what I'm looking at. I, grade seven, step one right now, if you went to having the technician, the wage rate would be between 1853 and 2220. 
um, to, not to start off with. Step one is 1853. Um, but again, with the computer network manager, we haven't had someone in that position for more than a decade. Um, I don't know that we even have a wage rate at this point for it. Yeah. Any further discussion? Yes, ma'am. Shosham on Pointer Street. Would this be a 40-hour position, and what would the person be doing when he's not working on a computer network? Find out. It, the projection is right now for a 20 hour per week position. We had um, started off with the idea of maybe going to 40. We decided to backpedal a little back and go to a 20 hour per week position. Um, and there's, how do I put it? It's not, when you talk about the network, we're not just talking about the network. We're talking about the individual CPUs in the highway department, in town hall in the library, in the council on aging, at recycling, at the water department, at municipal and school building committee. So there are all the elements from nuts to whatever else that ha this person has to cover. Right now, I don't see that person run running out of things to do. And if they do, we have this entire building right here that doesn't have the equivalent. And I've indicated to the school before that it, we were quite willing to share. In fact, originally the position was going to be a shared position with both um, the school and the town putting money in to fund the position. The school was unable to do that because of their budget restraints. But they have even more computers here than we do here and a much larger network here than we have over at the uh, town hall and the other buildings. We've not, for instance, done a complete upgrade for the network, as an example. We've not done an evaluation of what we should be doing during the next five or 10 years to keep up to date with security issues and such. There's a whole range of issues that we've been letting slide that if you were in any private industry, you'd have people dedicated to doing something like this with a 20 million a dollar a year business. You wouldn't just have some guy who's trying to do five or six other things coming in and trying to fix the computers and helping people do that. We pay a very large sum. It, I mean, we've worked with a number of outfits to have come in. They're all on an on-call basis. We're paying over $100, even more than that, per hour when they do come in or when they do work with us online. Um, they're, comp you know, they're very competent, but one, one problem, of course, is the cost. The second problem is the reaction time. Having someone here five days a week, four hours a day, we're going to get to people's issues much, much more quickly. If someone calls me up right now and says, I can't print anything, the, my choice right now is, one, is a couple of things. Say to them, sorry, it's tough. Um, can't do it, can't do your work. Second is I go over and try and fix it while you're probably asking me to do something else that's overall more in my in terms of my job description, or three, call an outside firm to help them out, but it may be a couple of days before they do. And it's going to be a much more expensive proposition than having someone on staff or having me in terms of uh, resource allocation. If you're paying me to do something else, it's more important. Um, I understand it's a change, but we're in 2015 now. We're not in 1995, where we could get away with not having anybody. Um, it's a very different world out there. We run our town government, we run our school system, we run all our offices using computers. If they go down, then you're going to be very, very unhappy, because you'll find out you can't, in fact, get anything done with our town departments. Mrs. Roy? I just wanted to just um, verify what Charlie was just talking about. We've had our challenges with technology in our town. We haven't been able to financially keep up with certain things as, as he spoke about upgrading our infrastructure. Um, we lost months of it accounting um, on our computer system and it's taken a lot of time to try to rebuild that. So Charlie's time is better spent doing the things that he needs to do and this is a much needed position. We recognize that you know, everybody is um, hurting financially, but this is really, really going to cost our town more money if we don't address it in this way, because the outside agencies do cost at least $100 an hour. 
just a minute. Uh, you have uh, right here. You haven't spoken yet. Line up. Oh, this is long. Line up. Right. Didn't recognize you. Um, no, I haven't been here a while. I'm sorry. Um, I'm Allison Long from Monponset Street, um, and I work for a nonprofit um, teaching in, in Brockton. And we have somebody who goes around amongst the various offices. I think we have six or seven different centers. Uh, and this person fixes whatever has gone wrong. In the meantime, the computers go down. And I have just made an assignment for my students, and guess what? Half of them can't do it. It's very frustrating, and it has a significant impact. And yet we do at least have somebody. Um, we are now facing, as a nation, massive um, uh, losses of data, theft. All of us are concerned about it in our own lives, about our cell phones and our emails and our finances and so on. It makes no sense for us not to try to protect ourselves as a town. And so I strongly think that we should do okay, this. Thank you. Uh, this is Sosha. Mr. Moderator, first, I am for the position, but I just have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. um, 20 hours a week, are they eligible for benefits? And if it goes to 40 hours a week, what benefits will they receive? And right now, 20 hours a week, in 1853, it comes to $370 a week. If that's how we're paying somebody to come in and help out, by all means. But we need to be up front here and tell us if they're getting benefits as well. Okay, we'll find out. Mr. Seelig? Yes, a 20-hour-a-week position does get benefits, so the lead benefits go into effect, health insurance, things like that. The lead benefits are done on a prorated um, system in the sense of if you work 40 hours a week, you're at this level for your leave, sick leave, um, vacation, et cetera. If you're at 20, it's half of that. So yes, at 20. So if, if some point, 5, 10, 20 years from now, the physician goes up to 40, the health insurance, for instance, doesn't change. They're on the health insurance or they're not on health insurance. They're eligible one way or the other. The leave is commensurate with the number of hours that they work. Okay. <coughs> Any further discussion on amendment number seven to the wait? Yes, Mr. Conway. <coughs> It's something we definitely need in this town with all the technology going on. My question is, is when this gets classified, is there a way that it goes, that it's spread out between the town departments so that it's not that because the town's paying for specialists to come in whenever they have an issue. Each department has to do that. If the police department has a computer down, that comes out of their expenses, correct? I don't know, we'll find out. But if, if that's what it is, is there a way to kind of share this position throughout the town so that a little bit comes from police, a little bit comes from the water department's budget that they already have so that we can absorb this into the budget we're already working with now? I.e., we don't have to, we have a new position, but everybody throws into it. We're not increasing our overall expenditure. We're just taking out of the operating budgets for each department. Okay, we'll try to find out. Mr. Seeley? When I listed all those departments, I very specifically didn't mention police and fire. They handle their own data processing needs. I don't cover and don't have jurisdiction over those departments. The way it works right now, even today, is that when we have to bring somebody in, it's the data processing budget that pays for it. It'll be the same way with this person. This person pay will come out of data processing. It won't come out of the water, it won't come out of solid waste or highway, the treasurer, the county, it doesn't matter. And we do that with a number of areas. For instance, our health insurance is one line item. Individual departments don't pay for that. Um, gasoline, same thing. Heating, same thing. There are just in terms of trying to allocate the expenses, I understand that it can be a common practice, but the problem is for each department then trying to figure out how much they are going to need for that position is very, very difficult and can be a high degree of variation from year to year. That's why it's inside 
one budget for data processing. Any further discussion? Yes, go. Stephanie McDonald from Franklin Street. Um, you know, I run a business and um, I found that I could have a full time tech person, but it's really much less expensive because not including the benefits. And I know a lot of, um, you know, tech companies that will put you on a weekly stipend and they have 24 hour call in service. So I don't know why we need to add another employee when we could use contract services. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Martin. Uh, yes, Mr. Andrews, please have clear. Please have a seat. Thank you. So the um, town administrator provided us with a number of different ways to solve the problem, and actually hiring the person in-house is a much cheaper solution for the town. Um, when Charlie talks about $100 per hour to come in, that's, that's approximately what the town has to pay when we have to call in for someone from the outside. We did lose approximately three months worth of data because we were not backing up because someone was not actively looking at the backups for the town. So I think it's a much needed position and there won't be any open time for the person. I think he's going to have to go and understand what the network looks like now, what the computers on the network look like, and he's going to have to create a plan to upgrade us. We, we need to upgrade the upgrade the computers. We're not doing that on a yearly basis on the town side of things. We are behind on that side of the issue. And, and it did come back to bite us this this fiscal year. Any further debate? Uh, yes, sir, back to four. Uh, Jonathan Seelig, uh, Stony Way Road, and just to make it clear, I'm not related to Charlie Seelig. It's <laughs> <laughs> completely different. But I am gonna, I am gonna support, I am gonna support this amendment. Um, our town, you want to think of our town as a, as a business, and this is a 21 million dollar business, right? I don't like our taxes going up at all, but to not have in this technology world somebody watching our backs is crazy. Mr. Sealing, I know it's un uh, uncomfortable, but you have right to here. Sorry, <laughs> it's me and you. Let's do this, me and you. All right, let's go. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but I, I mean, I, again, I don't want our taxes to go up. It, uh, we have high taxes. It's a whole different discussion, but we we need somebody watching our computers, and and it could even save us money. You know, for this, for calling out for $100 an hour, it just seems, and, and to have people that their jobs are to do other things, to have to completely stop, try to try to get the ball rolling again, it just doesn't, it's not, it's not good business. Okay, thank you. Move the question. Move the question. We have a, a motion and a second to move the question. Uh, I'll avoid a vote if I don't see anybody else interested in discussing. If they do, then we're going to have to vote on that. Not seeing that, we'll go right to the question. All those in favor of amendment number seven as printed in the uh, warrant under article two to the wage and personnel, wage and personnel bylaw, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Pass is unanimous. Okay. Okay, moving on to amendment number eight, this is Rogers. Exercise. <laughs> move that the town vote to approve amendment eight as printed in the warrant. We have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second on amendment number eight to the wage and personnel bylaw as printed in the warrant. Mrs. Rogers, do you want to uh, speak to your uh, motion? I believe if the um, health agent is here or Charlie what? could speak to this. John Delano. Oh, Mr. Delano. Mr. Delano wants to speak to the motion. Please do so. John Delano, Chairman of the Board of Health. Thank you for letting me speak to this motion. Uh, this is a increase in the animal inspector's wages. Uh, we found that the retired animal inspector um, 
did a marvelous job. I don't know how she was able to do all that she did uh, with the small amount of pay that she received. This is a very important position. Uh, the animal inspector is in charge of quarantining pets that may have been exposed uh, to rabies or may have bitten a child or a person and needs to go through a 10-day quarantine period. There's paperwork that has to be filled out. Um, and then there's also um, the state mandate of inspecting the barns. And we have 57 barns in Halifax that have to be inspected. Um, I have a log of the animal inspector's work that she has performed. And in evaluating the amount of work that uh, this person has done, it is entirely underpaid position. And what we are asking for is a increase in pay to uh, be commensurate with the amount of hours that this inspector is putting into the job. OK, thank you. Finance Committee's recommendation. I apologize to the town. This is my department, and I did not get a chance to talk to the Board of Health about this, so we do not have a recommendation at this time. So the Finance Committee does not have a recommendation, which means they do not recommend. Um, any further discussion on Article uh, Amendment 8? Uh, okay, Mr. Andrews. So just a, a couple of questions to ask the Board of Health. H approximately how many hours uh, is this position per year uh, putting in currently? And has this um, happened year over year? And what is the pay rate for the hours that she's working? <laughs> the amount of uh, pay is just a um, stipend every two weeks. Uh, so they may put in uh, a number of hours this week that are um, less than or even more than the following two weeks. So it's never never a just an hourly thing. Uh, it's an on-call basis, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Depends on how many dog bites. But I will tell you that uh, on May 14th in 2014, there was a coyote uh, that bit a dog, and the dog had to be put uh, into quarantine for 10 days. On uh, May 28th, 2014, a six-month quarantine was uh, issued on uh, what I believe is probably a barn animal. On May 29th, uh, the Animal inspector had to do a 10-day quarantine on a dog that um, had been exposed, possibly exposed to rabies. And so what that 10-day quarantine entails is uh, the paperwork that's necessary to go to uh, the Board of Health and the Department of Public Health and to also follow up uh, reporting with the uh, owner of the dog or the cat or whatever the animal might be and uh, a follow-up with the health agent to make sure that the proper protocol is being followed. So it really varies from uh, week to week, day to day, uh, so there's really no hourly rate. It's just a stipend every two weeks I sign the payroll, and that animal inspector could have worked 20 hours or 40 hours. Uh, we really don't know. It's just a, I mean, in terms of hourly rate. We know that they're doing the job and we get a log of what they're doing. Any further discussion? Just a minute. Yeah, Mr. Boulder. Yeah, uh, Jeff Bolger, Brandeis Circle. I believe this article actually needs to be amended because we've previously approved the 1% increase. So the inspector for animals salary is now $2,929. Um, so this article, actually, the way it reads right now is incorrect. I think the um, uh, article part, the part that you're referring to, is what the current rate is, 2,900. Is that right, so we've, we've already taken an, a vote to amend I and that. increase that. So it's already got, and I'm assuming that this is, this is the rate. It isn't going to get an additional 1% on top of that. 
Uh, well, that question I don't know about. I will say that I think the article is appropriate insofar as the number that is in this article, 5180, is the number that they wanted, regardless of 1% one way or another. But whether it goes up by 1%, I'll see if I can get an answer for you on that, because of the earlier one. Uh, Mr. Delano, if you know. According to the green handout, uh, this 5180 is uh, if the annual inspector salary amendment passes, uh, and that's the 1% sheet here, so I think it includes the 1%. Okay, so the motion that's on the floor will increase the current rate to 5180, and then is that from your understanding, Sylvia, the town accountant, maybe you just want to tell us that? In corroboration with the earlier vote? Right? My understanding was that the 5180 would be the rate for fiscal 16, so we left it at the 5180, even at the 1% increase. So, so it would stay at 5180. It will stay at 5180. So the number will be 5180 as printed in the book. Uh, that question here. <coughs> Julia Crawford, Delia Way. I was just wondering if we could find out how many incidents over the past few years have occurred. I know he had mentioned um, three incidents of May of 2014. Do we have an average number of incidents from 2014, 2013, 2012, any of the previous years? Mr. Delano? I don't have that information, but um, if you would like me to read uh, 36 incidents that ran from May 14, through December 26th, I, I can, um, but I have a log of the answer, that. The answer to the question is there were 86 incidents? 36. Uh, 36. Oh, 36. You don't have to read them. Okay, well, I think we have an answer to the question. Thank you. Any further debate on amendment that was the delay? That was just the, uh, the dog bites, the animal bites, those kind of things that didn't include the 57 barn inspections. Yes, I'm interested in what is the purpose of a barn inspection and what's involved in that. Mr. Delano, can you handle that? The barn inspection is a state mandated uh, activity uh, that. that the state has required the Board of Health uh, to appoint an inspector to go out and review the barn's condition, the animal's conditions, whether they're being fed properly, whether they've been stabled properly, um, they have adequate food, water, uh, areas to exercise if it's appropriate, if that's the type of animal they are. So the state has a, a whole list of items that they're looking for that this animal inspector reports to them directly, not to the Board of Health, as far as the inspections go. Uh, as far as the quarantine and the uh, following up on any possible rabies contact, they report to the Board of Health and the Department of Public Health. So I've given you kind of a rough idea of what the prime inspector does, but it's primarily duties that the state mandates. <coughs> Uh, also, vaccinations, those kind of things. I had a question in the back there. Yes, ma'am. Uh, don't forget, folks, if you want to get my attention, it's best if you stand and wave and yell, Mr. Moderator. That way I don't have the less chance of missing. Anita Sprague, Hudson Street. I'd like to know how many hours this person actually works in one year. Okay, thank you. We'll see if we can find out. I think he answered that earlier, saying they don't track it, but Mr. Delano, can you affirm that or deny it or tell us anything? Again, I, I can't tell you how many hours. It's uh, as needed, on call, and um, whatever it takes. Okay. Any further debate on amendment number eight to the wage and personnel bylaw? Yes, ma'am. Helen Doucette, Wyden Lane. Um, I'm just very concerned because this is a very big increase. What? This is a um, very big increase. 
Um, my question is, why is this such a large increase? Why is it what? Is it a large increase. Okay, we'll find out for you. Um, Thank you. Mr. Delano, do you want to handle that? After reviewing the uh, current animal inspectors' uh, logs and reports, the Board of Health uh, staff and the Board of Health members uh, determined that this position that's extremely important to the public health was severely underpaid for I don't know how many years now uh, with the previous inspector. And uh, for whatever reason, that inspector never brought it to our attention. And if they had, we would have increased this maybe year by year or uh, in different increments over the past decade, for example. Uh, I've been on the Board of Health, I don't know how many years, almost 20 some odd years, I guess. And if we had seen these types of reports coming to us, we would have been before town meeting a lot sooner with uh, a suggested increase because there's really not too many people in this town who would work all those hours for what was that little bit of a pain. So we felt it needed to be adjusted. Any further discussion? Uh, yes, ma'am. Erica Rossini, Deer Run Road. Is the animal inspector the same as the dog officer? I'll find out for you. Uh, can you handle that, Mr. Delano? Uh, it is not. Uh, the dog officer is a uh, police department uh, employee un under their budget, and the animal inspector is um, both appointed by the Board of Health, uh, paid through their budget and also has to be approved by the uh, Department of Agriculture. So it's completely separate. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Andrews? Uh, one more question. Um, again, sorry, this is, we didn't get to ask these questions earlier to the Board of Health, but on average, how long does a, a barn inspection take? How often does a, how a barn inspection? Yeah, how, how, how long, long is the, barn the process take and what happens with that? According to this law, um, a barn inspection that's uh, fairly straightforward is about an hour and a half. <laughs> okay. Mr. Rogers? Mr. Moderator, on a uh, report from the Port of Health from the agent that put this together, Mrs. Drynan, she has listed that the average hourly how, amount of hours per week is five. That's what we're talking about, five hours a week. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion on uh, Amendment 8 to the Wage and Personnel Bylaw as printed in the mark? Seeing no evidence thereof, all those in favor of the bylaw, which uh, which adds to uh, 5180, say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Amendment 8 fails. Moving to Amendment 9. Uh, Mrs. Rogers. I move that the town vote to approve Amendment 9 as printed in the warrant. Is there a second? Mr. Garrett, a second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, to approve Amendment 9 as printed in Article 2 regarding the wage and personnel bylaw. Mrs. Rogers, do you want to speak to this change? Uh, Mr. Seelig has um, brought before us a proposal for our town employees in different departments to be um, able to take courses that are made available on uh, one particular is a state agency that does uh, things like human resources, um, how to uh, how to manage your time better, different things like that, safety issues. And in my, after a lot of discussion, we've decided that it's a good idea for our town employees to be trained in these different categories, especially if it's in safety 
or something to do with their particular department head. However, we do not want it to become an overtime issue, nor do we want it to become a burden on the community. So we've written it the way it's printed on the sheet, and we would be paying for the uh, necessary time, to transportation, which could be driving their own car. Some of these meetings could be in a neighboring community with other town halls, or it could be in our community. We're just trying to cover all bases and make this available to our town police. Okay, thank you. Finance Committee's recommendation. The Finance Committee recommends. Finance Committee recommends. Any discussion on Amendment 9 uh, and to the Wage and Personnel Bylaw as printed in Article 2? Uh, seeing no evidence thereof, all those in favor of Amendment 9 say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes by majority. Moving on to Amendment 10. Mrs. Roberts. I move that the town vote to approve Amendment 10 as printed in the warrant. Okay, we have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second to uh, approve Amendment 10 as printed in uh, Amendment 10 to the Wage of Personnel Bylaw as printed in Article 2. Uh, Mrs. Rogers, do you want to speak to the amendment? We have a sick bank in town that is for the non union employees. Um, what this, in essence, is saying that if a person has requested time on the sick bank, and their illness goes into the next year, they're not going to be penalized. They can still come before the board and get, the, um, get an amount of time, and it would all be reviewed, and there's a separate board made up of individuals in the town that are town employees who will make those decisions, and each case is based on that individual case. It's not a blanket deal. Okay, thank you. Finance committee recommendation on Amendment 10. The Finance Committee recommends. The Finance Committee recommends. Any discussion on Amendment 10 to the Wage and Personnel Bylaw as printed in Article 2? Seeing no evidence there. Oh, yes, ma'am. So are they saying that if they've used all this sick time, then they can use the sick time they haven't worked for yet for next year's sick time? I'll find out for you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Seeley wants to try that. The sick leave bank it was set up several years ago, and employees have a choice of whether they want to participate or not. If they do, they have to make a contribution to the sick bank every year. However, let's run a hypothetical. We're at June 30th. This person is already sick or and has been using the sick leave bank leave already granted by the sick leave board. We don't want to have them not be able to continue to use that sick leave bank leave that's been granted to them so that as the year goes over from June 30th to July 1st, they continue to be eligible. It's not a situation of someone using their sick leave before it's given to them in the sense of the amount that's accrued every month. The sick leave bank is specifically for those situations when someone is sick, has used all their sick leave, and then has been granted additional sick leave by the sick leave bank board. But the only way they can get that grant is by participating in this. It's not a situation where I've never participated in the sick leave bank board, I've never given any, any uh, sick leave to the bank, and now I want some sick leave. They have to participate. Okay. Any further discussion? Just a minute. Uh, okay. Sorry, but I don't think he answered my question. Okay. My question was, question? after June 30th, if you're done using all their sick days, are they going to be allowed to use the next fiscal year sick day? What I'm trying to explain is that it's not a situation they're using their sick leave before it's granted to them. They're using sick leave from the sick leave bank. And if you're asking, can they get an additional grant from the sick leave bank? Yes, this is specifically set up to allow for that because we didn't want to rule someone ineligible because they were on sick leave. In essence, we're saying to someone, sorry, you're out of luck, you're so sick that you can't be, in fact, get a sick leave bank grant. Um, 
We have, as it is, I don't think we've run into many situations where, in fact, the bank's been used. I think the St. Hill and Town Accountant probably could tell me that's fewer than five since we've had um, the bank in existence. It's rare, but we're trying to set up, uh, avoid a situation that someone who's been using sick leave becomes ineligible for the sick leave bank. Mr. Moderator? Yeah. I think there's a misunderstanding of what, what we're talking about. That individuals not using, they may have exhausted all their own sick time that's on the books. In order for them to continue to stay out because they have a serious illness, there's a bank been form and everybody can see we all contribute five bucks to it a week. At the end of that period of time, the money has so much in it that individual is allowed to go before the board and ask to have some of that money so they can continue to be sick. That's what it is. It's not the sick leave. It has nothing to do with right. on personal time. Okay. okay. Any further discussion on Amendment 10? Uh, Mr. Andrews? Uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, just to clarify, there, when the employees donate to the sick bank, they're not donating any money to the sick bank. They're donating their time, their hours. So this is an unfunded mandate that the town is carrying from year to year by the number of hours that are in the sick bank. So if there's an employee who is absent from their work and has used up all their sick time, and now the town has to hire somebody else for to fill that position, that's when it costs the town. That's what the liability is. Any, any further discussion on Amendment 10 to the Wage and Personnel Bylaw as held in Article 2? Seeing no evidence thereof, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Mr. Mr. Schleiner. Moderator, I, I, I'd like to move that we suspend the annual town meeting and go right into the special town meeting. Uh, we have a motion to adjourn this town meeting, to take up the special town meeting, and then to return after the special town meeting. Do we have a second? Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Uh, passes unanimously. Uh, we will now move to the special town meeting. I'll ask the clerk to come up and open the special town meeting. To either of the constables, I told the chief in the street to either of the constables of the town of Halifax and the county of Plymouth reading. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of said town, qualified to vote in elections and in town affairs, to meet at the Halifax Elementary School in said Halifax on Monday, the 11th day of May next, at 8 o'clock in the afternoon, then and there to act on the following articles. And you are directed to serve this warrant by posting up attested copies thereof, the town hall, Halifax post office, and three other public places in said town, 14 days at least before the time of holding said meeting. Hereof fail not, and make due return of this warrant with your doings thereon to the town clerk at the time and place of meeting as aforesaid. Given under our hands this 14th day of April in the year of our Lord 2015, Kim Roy, Michael Schleif, Troy Garren, true copy of test, Thomas Hammond, Constable. Thank you, Mrs. Gaynor. Uh, the special town meeting will uh, be subject to the new bylaw regarding the lottery. So. Okay, so the first um, the first article to be addressed tonight is Article Four. <laughs> and that is a uh, article proposed by. Town Administrator, so... Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move the article as printed. Second. So, we have a motion by the uh, Board of Selectmen to approve Article 4 as printed in the warrant. Do we have a second? Yeah, Mr. Moderator, uh, hang on. Mr. 
moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer $12,350 from line 156 gas and oil all departments of article five of the May 12th, 2014 annual meeting and $5,000 from water retained earnings into the line items as follows. Line number seven, town hall electricity, $1,400. Line 43, Town Building Committee Electricity, $100. Line 51, Police Station Maintenance, $5,000. Line 74, Elementary School, $4,750. Line number 99, Water Supply, $5,000. Line number 111, Recycling Center Expense, $600. Line 122, Pope's Tavern Electricity, $100. And line 132, Library Expense, $400. We have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second, and it's different than what's printed, so I'll read it also. To transfer $12,350 from line 156, Gas and Oil, All Departments of Article 5 of the May 12, 2014 Annual Town Meeting and $5,000 from water retained earnings into the following line items. Line item seven, town hall electricity, 1,400. Line item 43, town building committee electricity, $100. Line 51, police station maintenance, $5,000. Line 74, elementary school, $4,750. Line 99, water supply, $5,000. Line 111, recycle, recycling center expense, $600. Line 122, Hope's Tavern, electricity, $100. Line 132, library expense, $400. Uh, Mrs. Roy, it's your article. Do you want to speak to it? Do you want me to, Charlie, do you want to do what you want me to? I think you noticed probably most of you back in November, your electricity rates went up. Same thing happened with the town. When we budgeted, of course, we were doing the initial budget in January of 14. We passed the budget in May of 14. We were not expecting those increases in November of 14. So we have uh, situations where we've underfunded all those line items for electricity. Luckily, as you also noticed, your gas prices, in terms of gasoline, the pump went down, same for the town. So we're able to have money from one account, move it into another account, meaning all these other accounts for electricity to cover our um, potential deficits for this year. Thank you. Finance Committee's recommendation on Article 4 as presented. Finance Committee recommends. Finance Committee recommends. Any discussion on Article 4 as presented? Mr. Bolton. Yes, Jeff Paul, Jeff Randy Circle. I, I just had a question. Since the Halifax School Department has its own budget and they have line items for utilities and heating, um, I'm just wondering why didn't they, uh, you know, make up this extra cost like every other homeowner, adjust their budget instead of coming back to, to town meeting for this? I'll see if I can find out. Mr. Seeley? Since this increase hit everybody, didn't matter which department, how small, how large, I found it fairest to make sure that all departments, school, non-school, were compensated for the increase. Okay. Any further discussion on Article 4 as presented on the special town meeting? Seeing no evidence thereof, all those in favor of Article 4 as presented say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. We'll now draw the next article. Article 13 for the special town meeting is the next article up. It is proposed by the Board of Selectmen. Let me get to it. Just a minute here. Yep, I got it. Uh, yep. Mrs. Roy? 
Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move to transfer $10,240 from line item number 157, heating all buildings of Article 5 of the May 12, 2014 annual town meeting to line number 63, building inspector salary, Article 5 of the May 12, 2014 annual town meeting to pay for earned and unused vacation time upon the retirement of the current building inspector. We have a second. We have a motion and a second. And again, I'll, if this is different than what's printed, I'll read it again. Transfer $10,240 from line 157, meeting all buildings of Article 5 of the May 12, 2014 annual town meeting to line 63, building inspector salary of Article 5 of the May 12, 2014 annual town meeting to pay for earned and unused vacation time upon the retirement of the current building inspector. Uh, it's your article. Do you want to speak to Thank it? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Our current building inspector is retiring on June 30th and has unused vacation time, which the town of Halifax is obligated to pay. This will fund the amount needed to, um, to meet this obligation. Okay, uh, Finance Committee's recommendation on Article 13 as proposed. The Finance Committee recommends. Finance Committee recommends. Any discussion on Article 13 as proposed in the Special Town Meeting Warrant? Seeing no evidence thereof, all those in favor of Article 13 say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Moving on to the next article. <laughs> Now move on to Article 8 for the special town meeting, which is proposed by the Board of Selectmen. Article 8. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I would move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $83,975 from the Stabilization Fund Number 3, Water System Protection, from continuation of the invasive weed rep Remination uh, project in Montpensier Pond. Okay, we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. This is a little bit different from the printed, so I will again read it. That the town vote to transfer the sum of $83,975 from stabilization fund number three, in parentheses, water system protection, close parentheses, for continuation of the invasive weed remediation project in Montponset Pond. Uh, because this is a transfer from a reserve fund, it will require a two-thirds majority. We'll try to do it by voice, voice vote if I can. Mr. Garrett, it's your article. Do you want to speak to it? Um, several years ago, we received money from state concerning uh, MD MDT in our lakes. And we've been trying uh, earnestly to try to claim that up. And by doing so, we the fund that was developed, this is what his money will be coming from in order to pay to, to clean the lakes up and get rid of all the weeds and other things. Well, that's another one, but it's the same problem. Okay, the Finance Committee's recommendation on Article 8 as proposed. The Finance Committee recommends. The Finance Committee recommends. Any discussion on Article 8, the special town meeting as proposed? Uh, I'll try for a voice vote. Again, this requires a two-thirds majority. All those in favor of Article 8 as proposed, say aye. Aye. Opposed? The moderator declares a two-thirds majority. It passes. We'll go on to the next one. Okay, the next article will be Article 2 in the special town meeting uh, warrant which is proposed by the town accountant. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer from undesignated fund balance the sum of $1,605.80 to replenish Article 46, from, which is uh, repair and improve Summit Street Fields from the annual town meeting of May 13th, 2013, in order to correct an accounting error. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. A motion and a second, and again, because it's a little different, I'll read it. The town vote to transfer from undesignated fund balance the sum of $1,605.80 to replenish Article 46, repair and improve Summit Street Fields 
of the annual town meeting of May 13, 2013, in order to correct an accounting error. Uh, Ms. Nolan, it's your article. This account was closed in error at the end of last fiscal year. When it was closed, the money went into un the undesignated fund balance. This article was just replenishing that account. Okay, thank you. Uh, Finance Committee's recommendation on Article 2 is presented. The Finance Committee recommends. Finance Committee recommends. Any discussion on Article 2 as presented? Seeing no evidence thereof, all those in favor of Article 2 as presented say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. We'll move to the next article. Next article will be article number six, which is proposed by the Board of Select, I believe. Mr. Moderator. Uh, Mr. Garrett. I move that the town vote to transfer $2,500 from line 157 heating all buildings of Article 5 on May 12, 2014, annual meeting, town meeting, and $25 from 100, line 157 of gas and oil, all departments of Article 5 on May 12, 2014, annual town meeting for the total of $5,000 to be added to line 154 insurance of Article 5 of the annual town meeting of May 12, 2014 for a total of $258,300. Okay, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second, and again, because it's different than uh, what's printed, I'll, I'll read it. Transfer $2,500 from line 157, heating all buildings of Article 5 of the May 12, 2014 annual town meeting and $2,500 from line 156, gas and oil, all departments, of Article 5 of the May 12, 2014 annual town meeting for a total of $5,000 to be added to line 154, insurance of Article 5 of the annual town meeting of May 12, 2014 for a total of $258,300. Uh, so we have a motion to second. Mr. Gannon, you want to speak to your article? Uh, Mr. Seeley is going to speak to your article. This is the general and property liability uh, insurance, not our health insurance. Right now, we've paid for all the policies for the year we're in right now, but we're tapped out. If I had any losses during the next month and a half, I wouldn't have any money to cover the deductibles. So. Um, I wanted to get money back into the fund to cover that. If, in fact, we don't have any losses for the next month and a half, the money at the end of June will simply go right back into the general fund. Okay, thank you. Finance Committee's recommendation on Article 6 of the Special Town Meeting. The Finance Committee recommends. The Finance Committee recommends Article 6 <coughs> as presented. Uh, any further discussion on Article 6? Seeing no evidence thereof, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. We'll move on to the next article. Next article will be Article 9. Just my name. Vote by the board to elect me. Hold on next. I move that the town vote to transfer $130 from line 156 gas and oil all departments of Article 5 of May 12, 2014 annual town meeting to pay for the street lights on Aldana Road beginning on July 1st, 2015. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Again, because it's different than what's printed. Article 9, I will read the motion. To transfer $130 from line 156 Gas and Oil, All Departments of Article 5 of the May 12, 2014 Annual Town Meeting to pay for a street light on Aldana Road beginning on July 1st, 2015. Uh, we have a motion and a second, and Mr. Seeley is going to speak to it. Situational Aldana is we've had one street light on Aldana. It was paid for by a private resident for more than a decade. The resident made a decision not to continue to pay for the street light. We had a different resident at a different location on Dana Road say, well, could you get the street light turned on again? Um, and our tradition here in Halifax is to bring those decisions right back to town meeting if they want to pay for an additional street light. 
in consulting with the police chief, the chief has recommended that we move the street light, which is a little bit down the road, to the intersection with Route 36 so that it's right there at the intersection. Um, if town meeting approves this appropriation, we'll move the street light and start paying for it um, every year starting on July 1st. Okay, uh, finance committee's recommendation first. Finance committee recommends. Finance committee recommends, Mr. Baldwin. On uh, Article 9 is presented. Yes, uh, Jeff Bolger, Brandeis Circle. Uh, I've been in Halifax for 75, uh, since 1975, and I live on Brandeis Circle, and that circle has a heck of a lot more people living on it. It's a paved road, cars go much faster, <coughs> there's a major intersection with a major street, Oak Street, and that road, that development has never had street lights. And I know, I can't remember exactly when, but I know the town, in, as a conservation savings effort, closed or, or shut down a number of street lights throughout the town. And it seems to me, before they start adding new street lights now back, that there should be some priority made throughout the whole town. You should look at every, the whole town and decide where's the best place if you're gonna add that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Seward? Back in the early 1990s when we had one of our recessions, in fact, the previous speaker's correct, we turned off a whole battery of streetlights. Um, starting in the mid-1990s, and, and I was there for this, uh, those iterations, we started turning all of them back on. Um, it took a few years, but all the lights that were turned off back at that time were turned back on again. Since then, individual requests have been made for specific street lights. Those requests have been brought to town meeting for a vote. Town meeting has made decisions whether to in fact pay for those street lights, one way or the other. In addition, when we've accepted subdivisions, we've accepted the street lights also and add that to the bill. That was part of our responsibility. Um, no question, there may be other locations where street lights were appropriate. Uh, we're happy to have those requests come in. In fact, I just had one come in today Someone, I told the person they were, it was too late, we were already you know, set up for town meeting. But if anybody wants to request a street light, we can bring it to the board of selectmen, we can bring it then also the traffic safety committee, get recommendations. Okay, yes sir, my <clears throat> Sean O'Neill, Franklin Street. I believe there's other residents in town that have private street lights. And this may set a precedent for people to stop paying for their street lights and have the town have to pick up the tab for that. Okay. Something to consider. Thank you. Um, any further discussion on Article 9 as presented? Seeing no evidence thereof, all those in favor of Article 9 as presented say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Uh, article 9 fails. Moving on to the next article. Next article will be Article 11, which is proposed by uh, Silver Lake Regional uh, School Committee, uh, Mrs. Hanson. Mr. Moderator, I move the article as printed. Second. As printed. That's printed. Okay. Uh, article 11 has been moved and, moved and seconded as printed. Um, Mrs. Hansen, it's your article. Uh, please identify yourself for the crowd, please. I don't. Oh, sorry. Cassandra Hansen, Civil Lake School Committee. Thank you. Um, when we did the budget for um, this fiscal year, we budgeted a $50,000 for snow removal for Silver Lake. Um, as everybody knows, it was a tough winter, and we did have a huge expense for snow removal for the two roof for the middle school and the high school. Um, we are asking that we could move $160,000 from the district's excess and deficiency budget to pay for the snow removal and not affect the town's assessments. Okay. Uh, Finance committee's recommendation on Article uh, 11, as proposed. The Finance Committee recommends. The Finance Committee recommends. Any discussion on Article 11 for the special town meeting as proposed? 
Seeing no evidence thereof, all those in favor of Article 11 say aye. Oh, aye. aye. Opposed? Passes by uh, unanimous. Next article will be Article 5 of the Special Town Meeting. And that's proposed by the Town Treasurer, Mrs. Chabon, who may be making her last motion as the Town Treasurer, I think. Mr. Moderator, it goes well for you. thank you very much. <laughs> now I'll stutter. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, I move to see if the town will vote to transfer from available funds the sum of $10,000 for the town's unemployment compensation fund or take any other action thereon. Okay. Is that, uh, Mrs. Would you talk to Mrs. Owen for just one minute and make sure that's the right source? Oh. I think okay. it's, I think you want the one below. Okay, I'm sorry. See? Let's try that again. I told you this would happen. <laughs> the motion is, I move that the town vote to transfer $5,000 from Article 20 of the May 12th, 2014 annual town meeting, parentheses, school flat roof repair, to the town's unemployment compensation fund. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second, and I'll, I'll read it again because it's different than what's printed, to transfer $5,000 from Article 20 of the May 12th, 2014 annual town meeting, in parentheses, school flat roof repair, close parentheses, to the town's unemployment compensation fund. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. And it's your article, Mrs. Chabot. Um, this is a yearly thing we do to replenish the unemployment fund for any possible claims that come up within the next year. Okay, thank you. Uh, Finance Committee's recommendation on Article 5 as presented. The Finance Committee recommends. Finance Committee recommends. Any discussion on Article 5 as presented? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? This passes uh, unanimously. Uh, the next motion. Next article will be Article 7, which is uh, again proposed by the Board of Selectmen. Mr. Moderator. I move that the town vote to transfer from a stabilization fund three water system protection, the sum of $19,240 for continuation of the allergy remediation project in the Montpons Pond. Okay, we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second, and again, because it's different, I'll read it. Transfer from stabilization three, in parentheses, water system protection, close parentheses, the sum of $19,240 for continuation of the algae remediation project in Montpons <coughs> Pond, Mr. Garrett, it's your article. Uh, as with Article 8, it's, it serves the same purpose. We're tr trying to alleviate, especially in the West Pond, these scum and the green scum that comes on top from the allergy. And the only way we can do it is hopefully continue to be treated so we can get the lake back to a nice swimmable area instead of having to close it down every five days. Finance Committee's recommendation on Article 7 as presented. The Finance Committee recommends. Finance Committee recommends. As in Article 8, this is a request to transfer money from a stabilization fund. Requests to transfer money into and out of stabilization funds require two-thirds majority vote. Uh, so when we get to the vote, I'll try to do it by voice. Is there any discussion on Article 7 as presented? I see no evidence thereof. All those in favor of Article 7 as presented say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Moving on to the next article. Next article will be Article 10. Which is proposed by a solar field committee. Mr. Moderator. Mrs. Roy. I would request that we pass over this article. The motion to move, uh, the motion to pass over Article 10. Uh, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to pass over Article 10. In effect, take no action thereon. Um, do you have a, a 
Um, we um, formed the Solar Field Committee a few months ago. They were hoping that we would be able to um, come to town meeting with a, a plan. Um, we are still in the process of developing that plan. Therefore, we would request that we pass over this article, and hopefully we'll have something new to share with you at the next town meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, Finance Committee's recommendation on Article 10, passing over. The Finance Committee recommends passing over. Okay, uh, we have a motion and a second to pass over Article 10. Any discussion? All those in favor of passing over Article 10, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Next article. Next article will be Article 12, proposed by the Board of Selectmen. Hold on just a second. Mr. Monterey? Yeah, hold on. I want to make sure we get to our report here. Okay. Go ahead. Article 12, Mr. Garen. Uh, I would move that we appropriate $53,476.57 from the cable, television, and revolving fund to make contracted payments to Carver Halifax Excess TV. Okay. Do we, uh, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second, again, because this is different than what's printed in the warrant. Uh, the uh, motion is, is to appropriate $53,476.57 from the cable television revolving fund to make contracted payments to Carver-Halifax Access Television. Uh, Mr. Garrett, it's your article. Uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, in the past, uh, when we received with Comcast, we received money. It was placed in a, a revolving account so that we could use the money as needed for the studio. Since we no longer have Comcast and we now have the Carver Halifax Access TV, that we were informed by the state that we could no longer take the money from a revolving account. So we had to make a we we're making a line item so that we could pay the, for the services that's provided through the Carver Halifax Access TV. Okay, Finance Committee's recommendation on Article 12 as proposed. I think we need one minute to just re-vote that recommendation. Finance Committee recommends. Finance Committee recommends Article 12 as presented. Uh, any discussion on Article 12? Yes, sir, Mr. Conroy. <coughs> I was looking over the warrant from last year, and I know um, through Comcast we got a $100,000 last year, and I didn't see anything from the year before and the prior meeting. Comcast was paying us, and just correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know 100% about this. Comcast was paying us a certain amount of money to be the sole provider, I believe, in the town of Halifax. Um, on this, now we're gonna have to take 52,302, whatever the amount is, out of that, but also in our regular town meeting on Article 15, we're going to be asked to also move from available funds an additional $142,000 to establish a studio. Um, is And to make this a line item that's going to be completely going forward, we're going to have to come up with whatever that amount of money is. Is Comcast, are we no longer getting money from the cable company? And two is, can we now get cable? I know at one time we, it was, they had a contract with us that was the only cable provider we could get. Can we now get, you know, different cable providers? Okay, Mr. Seeley, do you want to try that? I'm sorry if I'm going to give a little too much narrative, but just to give some background. Until last year, Comcast ran this public access studio there by Cumberland Farms that came out, obviously they ran it, they paid for it, we didn't get any money for doing that. We got a little bit of money 
maybe a couple thousand dollars a year from licensing fees. They had a license for cable service here in Halifax. It's not a monopoly in the sense that anybody else can come in today, tomorrow, yesterday, it doesn't matter. Verizon, anybody else could come in and provide cable service. Nobody else wants to because the problem is we don't have a high enough density here in Halifax to make competition um, with wire profitable for more than one entity, at least the way it works right now. However, Comcast doesn't want to be in the studio business. They want to be simply providing cable and internet. They um, took over, if you remember, Adelphia, and before that, Heron. Um, Comcast isn't them. They're not interested in running a studio. So as the, each community in their area that they have cable, the licenses expire, they renegotiate their licenses, and there is no requirement that they provide a studio. However, they then have to provide the money for those individual communities to run a studio. And that's what they've started doing last year um, with the new license. So that we've gotten money from them during this year. We've sent everything we could up to $100,000 to the new Carver Halifax Access Television. However, the legal staying of the revolving fund is that we can't take more money out of that and directly send it to them. That's why this article is here. So I need all the remaining money that we've gotten from Comcast this year to run the new shared studio with Carver is going to that shared studio in Carver. With this coming budget, we were told that we can't use a revolving fund set up for this process. So instead, we'll get money from Comcast and the same amount of money will go out from the town to Carver Halifax Access Television. We're not using property taxes or anything to fund the studio. It's the, the money coming in will equal the money going out. It looks very much like a revolving fund starting next year, but legally we had to do it the way the state mandated that we do it in order to for us to provide the contribution that we said we would when we signed the agreement with Carver. Okay, uh, just a minute. Any other discussion? Go ahead. How much do we have in the revolving fund for the um, for that, and what is the contractual payments that need to be made from, I believe it's Comcast, to us on a yearly basis? The entire amount that's in there, the $53,000 we're asking to be transferred out, is the amount that's left right now in the revolving fund. So all that will go to Carver Halifax Access Television. In terms of the actual amounts from Comcast on a yearly basis, there are two checks in essence, or we'll get a series of checks, but for two different things. One, we'll get a capital equipment payment of $25,000 a year for the 10 years of the licensing agreement. That money goes for capital equipment for Carver Halifax Access Television. Then we get an amount equal to a certain percentage, I believe it's 5% of the revenues that Comcast derives from cable. So that is not a set amount, that's an amount based on what whatever they're charging and whatever people are paying for cable services. Not internet, just cable services. So we'll get a check that's based on that amount each quarter, and then we, th based on what we've seen so far, that's the amount that we wanted to, in addition to the um, capital check, the amount that we wanted to send in fiscal 16 to Carver Halifax Access Television. The agreement with Carver Halifax Access Television is that the money we get from Comcast will be sent to them because the whole reason for getting the money from Comcast was to run the studio, not to do anything else. Mr. Mulder? Yes, uh, I'm just wondering, given all of the new technologies, a lot of people are getting away from cable, they don't want anything to do with it. And therefore, those revenues that they're going to be getting from the residents of Halifax in the coming years is going to be, get less and less. And if this is based on a percentage, I don't see the cost of running a cable access studio going down. It's still going to be a, a fixed cost. And what's going to happen when that when that happens? Are we going to be look, looked at to try to come up with additional monies 
uh, out of taxes to, to supplement that? Okay, I'm trying to find out. Mr. Seelig? All we've guaranteed to Carver Health Access Television is the amount we're getting from Comcast. We have not guaranteed any set amount so that, as the previous speaker pointed out, if revenues decrease from this source of funding, simply means the amount we're sending to the studio will decrease. I agree that will mean the studio will have to make some hard decisions about what it can and cannot do in terms of um, the money it gets from Carver and what it gets from Halifax. But that's a situation that everybody understands we're walking into. Um, and if we come back some future year and say to you, well, things have changed. We'll have to, and we're asking for a money above and beyond Comcast. That's a discussion we'll have down the road. We're not automatically obliged um, by our agreement to fund Carver Halifax Access Television for any more than what we're getting from Comcast. Okay. Any further discussion on Article 12 as presented? Seeing no evidence thereof, all those in favor of Article 12 as presented say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, next article will be. Next article is Article 1 which is uh, proposed by the town accountant. Give me just a second to get my paper in order. This is no. I move that the town vote to transfer from line 157, heating oil, all buildings, of Article 5 of the May 12, 2014 annual town meeting, the sum of $11,000 to be added to line 127, veterans benefits of Article 5 of the annual town meeting, of the May 12th, 2014. We have a motion and a second, and again, I'll read it because it's different than what's printed. To transfer from line 157, in parentheses, heating all buildings, close parentheses, of Article 5 of the May 12th, 2014 annual town meeting, the sum of $11,000 to be added to line 127, in parentheses, veterans benefits, close parentheses, of Article 5 of the Annual Town Meeting of May 12, 2014. Mrs. Nolan, it's your article. This account was originally funded at $130,000. On April 6, 2015, the Finance Committee granted a reserve fund transfer of $15,000 to help us meet our May benefits obligation. This amount is needed to meet the June benefits obligation. Currently, there's only $5,181.94 in the account. Okay, thank you. Uh, Finance Committee's recommendation on Article 1. Finance Committee recommends. Finance Committee recommends. Any discussion on Article 1 as presented? Uh, seeing no evidence thereof, all those in favor of Article 1 as presented say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, the last article is Article 3. <laughs> That's proposed by, by Mrs. Nolan. <laughs> I move to pass over this article. Do we have a second? second. A motion and a second to pass over Article 3. Do you want to give us an explanation? This deficit is the deficit that we have for our snow and ice line item, and we're going to be able to offset that with um, FEMA money that the town will be receiving. Okay, thank you. Finance Committee's recommendation on passing over. The Finance Committee recommends. Finance Committee recommends. All those in favor, uh, any discussion? All those in favor of passing over Article uh, 3, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Mr. Schleif, would you like to make a motion? Mr. Moderator, yes, I, I, I motion we close uh, the special and so move back. Special town meeting and resume the annual? Yeah, you say that pretty good, yeah. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second to dissolve the special town meeting and resume the annual town meeting, which we will begin at Article 3. Uh, my committee's recommendation. <coughs> <laughs> it's not unanimous, but yes. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Well, passes unanimously. We will resume the special town meeting now at uh, Article 3. Mr. Moderator. Oh. Huh? 
Oh, the end. Right. Yeah, just the, the moderator. Uh, yes, so this is Mr. Andrews. Can we take a five minute recess? Uh, no? I guess so. We'll have a, uh, a recess for until 10 past 10. Anyone, please take advantage of the uh, Halifax and Lights. Uh, and then we're going to fix it. Good. Thank you.